So, there's a snow day today. Um, I wanted to take a second and give like an overview video since we'll be missing the last day of Canvas Camp. Um, so that's what this is. Okay, so I'm probably, as I'm talking, I'm definitely going to talk through the session um, in sometimes in a, a meta kind of way anyways. Um, so I may break the fourth wall from time to time as we go through this. But anyways, let's dive into things. Um, I want to first start out. Uh, so normally during our session uh, on the last day, I would ask the same question I did yesterday. And that is, what is the biggest takeaway that you will get from Canvas Camp? And that is modules. So modules was the biggest thing that, um, if you don't remember anything else, that is the one thing for sure. Um, now, after that question, I was planning on hosting a little bit of discussion, and it's a bummer that we're missing because it's like one of my favorite discussions I get to do. And I was going to ask you, okay, I was going to ask, why do you think the university switched to Canvas? Okay, so take, I don't know, pause this video, take 30 seconds, write down a few answers. Okay, so pause. All right, you back? Cool. So um, I want to talk through a few things that have come up, uh, previous answers to this question from previous groups of faculty from different Canvas camps of the past. So typically, a few things that are said are, you know, Canvas, for some people, they perceive it as less clunky, they perceive it as uh, more flexible, having the ability to integrate like more outside things into their courses and, and do those kinds of things. So um, as well as, I mean, one of my favorite things, the mobile devices up there, up there, um, being able to use the Canvas app to interact with things as a student or as an instructor, I think those are some some pretty big things that are you know viable viable improvements that we have access to. So um, that's one one group of answers. Um, here's another, um, and you can see there's a there's a few things here that are similar, but I just wanted to highlight you know a couple of things and also express to you something that I tell each of the groups on the last day. Um, so a change was coming whether we wanted it or not, and the reason being, the reason being is our version of D2L, which was a self-hosted version, the support for that was ending, so we had to make a change as a university anyways. Um, so that was that was coming whether we liked it or not. But I hope that some of the reasons that you wrote down and some of the reasons that I'm like displaying for you here kind of highlight why the university decided on Canvas after they were aware that they were going to have to make a change anyways. So those are those are just some things that I wanted to highlight. It's a bummer we didn't get to have this discussion in full. It's usually one, I mean, like I said, it's it's one of my favorites. It's It brings up some rich things um, that I love going over. Anyways, after that point in our session, uh, what we would do is we would jump into some of the content stuff that I will just demo for you here. Um, so let me toggle over. Let's jump into Canvas Camp. I will highlight since this is our last day. I'll jump into the day four content. And... Um, I mean, the biggest thing that people are probably interested in, so the, the goals, of course, are finishing your course and doing those things, but I was going to go over like the grading aspect, so let me go over that. But as a reminder, jump into the Canvas Camp curriculum, um, look through the goals, look through the s'more content they will have, um, lots of the things that you need to know, um, including, you know, the overview of the gradebook. I'm going to give some overview, but if you want to dive deeper, even after, um, even after this video, there's some options for speed grader. There's some options for grading in general and publishing content and all of those things. So let me dive into it. Um, but again, reference the Canvas Camp 
website for all of your needs. Okay, let me switch gears here. So let's talk through grading first. So I'm going to jump into the grade section. And this is a sample course that, so I'm assuming that you have already started adding some of your assignments to your course. Um, as I talked about yesterday, you will want to add your assignments, um, including your, you know, your papers that happen outside of class, your tests that happen in class, because as you add that and you uh, grant, like as you fill in the point values and the, the dates that they happen, um, that does several things within the system internally. As you fill in the points, it will actually fill in the points for your gradebook here. So I have um, a few of these items listed here. Um, and yeah, so these things are uh, like this reading response here is out of 10 points and that b was because I in my assignments denoted that that was a 10 point assignment so yes that is that is what is going to happen um, let me scroll over a little bit you can see I have several columns every one of these columns corresponds to one of those assignments so um, yes I'm going to uh, go through the exercise of grading um, a paper in this. Um, now, at a bare minimum, at any time, there's uh, probably about, let's say, three ways to go through the grading process. Um, you can interact with the Canvas gradebook just by clicking in these cells, and you can just input values. So I can hit 20 there, I can say 25 points there, I can say 30 points there. Um, you can assign over the amount if you're assigning some uh, extra credit for assignments. Um, but anyways, yeah, like the first way you can interact with the gradebook is just typing directly into the cells. Um, the second way that you can interact with the gradebook is if you already use your uh, grades like if you operate within Excel or spreadsheets you can just import and export the content from the gradebook um, and manipulate it that way so that's another way you can interact with it and the third is going to be the speed grader option which I'm going to dive into shortly I'm going to go through a couple more things before we get there now before we get to speed grader um, I want to highlight that this arrangement here, so the way that this is organized, if I navigate back to the front and I have an, an assignment called turn it in, I have an assignment called test quiz and a named quiz. So these are some of my assignments. Um, this order of the grade book will correspond to the order. So I'm going to toggle over to assignments. This corresponds to this order of your assignment. So that turn it in, that test quiz, that unnamed quiz, um, and on and on. However you set up your assignments and your groups of assignments, by default it will be ordered this way so that I would expect the last item in my gradebook to be L11-2. Um, so if I, I can check that, I can toggle over, whoop, over to grades, and I can see the last item, which is L11-2. So yes, that's how this is ordered. Um, alternatively, you can click on the settings wheel here next to the import export and you can arrange the columns by due date which will sort these chronologically uh, so if you prefer that kind of setup you can do that um, but I am going to arrange columns by the assignments group again which was the default that I just went over a um, couple more things before we jump into speed grader so after your last assignment you have this final section in the gradebook these columns that are a little bit darker these are the groups the assignment groups themselves so homework papers projects exams um, and they have their weights under them 
um, but it shows it displays these and then it displays the total grade at the very end of the grade book and this is what this is what the instructor's view looks like um, if I so I'm going to toggle back to the assignments one more time just to show you know as homework papers projects with these relative percents that are, they are weighted so this in the grade book corresponds to my assignment so homework papers projects exams with the percent total that they are worth okay so that is what that looks like now um, for each of these assignments let me go over to the sample paper okay when I hover my mouse over one of these columns uh, you get a little triangle in a circle and that is like a drop down menu for a few things um, we're gonna jump into speed grader in a second and this is one of the few ways you can enter the speed grader but before we do that I want to talk about the mute assignment um, option which if I click that it's gonna tell me um, it's gonna have some information but I'll just tell you what I what I use it for so the mute assignment um, I've muted this assignment and I've got this little indicator here this allows me to grade um, my papers for this course the papers for this course and not notify the students like it won't update their grades until I unmute the the assignment column here uh, what that means is if you grade like half of your assignments one day and then half the other day uh, that the students will not even know that that occurred in those two chunks like um, they will be unaware of that because for everyone it will just show that they have um, no grade assigned um, so the muting is useful for um, avoiding you know emails questions like you know this student's work was graded but my was not you know if you want to avoid that then I suggest muting uh, your assignments and then when you unmute the assignment it will roll out that uh, those grades for everyone simultaneously so in my grading workflow that is what I like to do now let me um, now that my assignment is muted I'm gonna jump into speed grader for a second so in speed grader um, it's giving me a warning for limitations with Firefox with them which I'm using um, but I don't see anything immediately so you may use Chrome here if it's a problem um, but okay let me go through a little bit of this here so this is the speed grader and uh, this documents already marked up I'm gonna toggle using these arrows up here to a blank paper so I'm going to toggle to this paper here it's blank and I want to comment on this so um, this comment option up here in the top left will bring up this overlay and I have some comments and some drawing options so I have three types of comments I can do the point comment is just allows you to click anywhere on the page and leave some comments for your students so I can do that um, I can do my area comment uh, if I want to if I want to you know say you know great intro work on your thesis so I can go through and I can um, I can set those comments up for um, different parts of the paper uh, and then finally you can do a text comment where you can just like highlight oops can highlight just a few words or sentences and then also leave comments there so um, so this is the online editor in the speed grader um, and it it lets you just do your annotations this way it lets you draw on the page so if you have a stylus computer you can just draw it's really hard for me to do with the mouse so um, uh, you can also do some highlighting um, and leave just general you know text boxes on the page if you want to do that 
um, however you are used to doing this. What's cool though is after I've annotated this up, this download option next to the comment, so this little button here, will let me download the file as an original doc um, that it was uploaded as, or as a PDF with the annotations that I've made. So that's an option for you if you like to do that. Let's say though that I have this paper, I've marked it up to my satisfaction, okay, um, and I want to assign the grade. So over here on the right, um, I can just input the grade value that I want to give, or if I have a rubric, I can say view rubric, and it will let me, um, let me adjust the screen here. If I have a rubric, I can come over here and I can just say, you know, um, this one's a pretty basic rubric for demonstration purposes, but I can click on these boxes and it will assign the values. Um, if I want to adjust them, I can just input the points here and that will give, you know, whatever value of points for the students and I can hit save. Um, and yeah, so you can do that out of the rubric. And then since I did this manually already, I'm gonna have to go back and say 75 points is what I'm gonna do. Um, but but that, that kind of is intended to help you standardize your grading a little bit. Um, additionally, you can just give assignment comments. This is very convoluted with assignment comments I've given in the past. You can see that you have the option to upload video comments or you can upload a file. So if you have um, some comments externally on another file, you can upload that here. But this text box will just accept text. Um, so leave comments here for your students. And I can hit submit. And then that will be a comment that's left generally for the student. Okay. Um, this interface up here, you can toggle between your students really quickly. You have a drop down menu of all your students as well. Um, and final icons, I would say. Uh, this is the mute option, which you have access to from the speed grader. So if this is my last paper, I may click this, and now all of the assignments are unmuted. So all of the grades have just been rolled out to the students. Um, okay. But with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little icon in the top le left, which has the, this is the gradebook icon that I can get back to my gradebook, and I can see those changes were made. So if I scroll over to that sample paper, I had assigned that 75% there. So that is now done. Okay, um, so that's just like a super quick overview, and I just wanted to give you some of that information. Um, and again, if you have some in-depth questions, please reference the Canvas Camp Day 4, especially. Um, reference our curriculum because it will link to videos, it will link to um, guides, and you know, if you want to know how to curve grades, there's a link to a document if I click on this and open it in a new tab. Um, this is a guide that I have uh, link to that's on the Canvas Guides website with the pictures and images of how to curve grades and what that means, what that looks like. Um, so those materials are there and available. I just can't review them all necessarily um, in this one quick take. Okay, last things. Um, so that's grading, that's the speed grader. Um, before you finish your course, these are the th last things you need to do. Um, if you have TAs, you want to go to the People tab, and from the People tab, you want to say Plus People, and you'll want to input your TA's um, information here. Um, uh, it will accept several things. It will accept their ID number. It will accept their 4x4. Four four. I can do mine real quick. Um, and then down here with the role, you can say that you want the, um, the role to be a TA. 
um, and then you can say there's this next button it will find them in the system you can do email or your the, I'm doing 4x4 for mine and then once you hit add user it will add that as that individual as a TA to your course so that's how you can do that and then they will show up here um, and then lastly the the final thing you want to do is you want to double check that all of your content is published so I'm gonna to go to my modules section here and this just has some general things it looks like all my content is published how I know that it's published um, this week one module is published because there's a green cloud with a check mark and then each of these individual items are also published because they have a green check mark um, I just unpublish that item and you notice it turned gray um, instead of green um, and then this cloud here is also changed now if you have several items that are unpublished in a module and you publish the module itself it will publish all of those contents so I just published those two things together by unpublishing and then republishing the entire module so that did the whole group of things really quickly um, and just remember that published content is what's visible to students unpublished is in draft mode and not visible to students because you are still editing it okay so double check that everything that you want visible to your students is visible to your students by make sh making sure it's published um, if you have any questions about that, um, let me, I'm going to unpublish this video link here. If you have any, any, you want to test this out, you can go to the settings of your course um, and then your bar on the right, which is below for me because I'm zoomed in. So you just want to access the student view. From your student view, you can go to your modules and you can double check that like for me that video link is not there because it's an unpublished con piece of content so students cannot see it um, these are the published items okay I'm gonna toggle back to instructor view I'm gonna republish this and the last thing you do for your course on the home screen of your course is you have to hit the final publish button which I've already done here with this course so let me go to one that doesn't have it um, so this final course status okay this is the last thing you do you hit the publish button here and that is when you want to roll that out to your students for them to see so you will need to do that um, when the semester starts or before if you want your students to access it um, your course and the content okay so that's the that's the last thing um, with that I again will just emphasize anything that you want to cover more in depth the canvas camp website will have those contents uh, but otherwise thank you very much for a fun uh, canvas camp this has uh, this has been really exciting I'm uh, sorry that we had a snow day and our final day was canceled, um, but let me know if you have any questions and enjoy your day off.